Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at the mechanism of the halogenation reaction that produces a vicinal dihalide, as well as the related synthesis of a halohydrin, or haloether, which would differ in using an alcohol here rather than water. Our mechanism must explain the observation that this is an anti-addition and stereoselective for one pair of enantiomers over the other, and in cases where our double bond is not equally substituted, we have regioselectivity in the halohydrin synthesis that also must be explained by this mechanism. This reaction involves combining an alkene with a halogen. The electron-rich pi bond will serve as our nucleophile here, and bromine will serve as the electrophile. While bromine is nonpolar, it can develop an instantaneous dipole, and we can indicate those partial charges using the Greek letter delta. So the nucleophile will attack the electrophilic site of our bromine molecule. In doing so, the bromine-bromine bond will break to make way for that new carbon-carbon bond. At this point, we need to pause and remind ourselves of a few pieces of experimental evidence. One is that this is an anti-addition. There is very specific stereochemistry produced in our product. Two, rearrangements are not observed. So a carbocation intermediate is unlikely to form here. To show a carbocation not forming, because if we were to stop right now, a carbocation would be present at, at this position. What we're gonna show is that the bromine back donates electrons to form what is called a bromonium ion, or generically a halonium ion. This bromine, bromonium ion can form from the front of my alkene, or it could form from the back of the alkene. These two bromonium ions are enantiomers and result from the fact that the alkene is planar. The bromine could add from the front face or it could add from the back face of that double bond. We also produce bromide ion here. Given the species present at this point in our mechanism, where is the electrophilic site? Is it the bromide ion? carbon of the bromonium ion, or the bromonium atom itself. Carbon is the electrophilic site here. There is going to be a significant amount of partial charge at these carbons due to the fact that the bromine is electron withdrawing and cationic. We also know that we are forming two carbon-bromine bonds in this reaction, so this bromide would make sense to react with the carbon of the backbone. And that is exactly what we predict is happening in this mechanism. The nucleophile attacks the electrophile, at which point the bromine carbon bond also breaks to make way for that new bond. This new bond must form on the opposite face of the molecule. The bromonium ion is blocking one face of this molecule, and therefore the bromide nucleophile must come in from the back side. This gives us the anti-relationship between those two groups. Likewise, if the same thing happens with our enantiomer, we will get the other stereoisomer. The bromide could attack either carbon here, and if it attacked the carbon on this side, it would yield this product, and if the bromide in this situation attack the bromide on the other side, it would yield this product. So only these two products are possible from these two enantiomers. Now let's consider what happens when we use a solvent like water in this reaction. Solvents solubilize the reactants and reagents, and we typically have a large excess of solvent relative to the reactants, and even more relative to the high energy intermediates. So I'm gonna add a few water molecules here to show that there are many, many around here. Water has lone pairs on that oxygen and can serve as a nucleophile. And you could imagine that the water would intercept this carbon electrophile and form a new carbon-oxygen bond. That carbon-oxygen bond must form from the opposite face of the bromonium ion because that bromonium ion is blocking that opposite side. This oxygen is now cationic. 
Solvent is present in a huge excess relative to all these intermediates. So there's more water around. Water can remove this proton. Bromide ion could also do the job here as well. So what we end up with is a neutral halohydrin, where we have the anti-arrangement of the halogen and the alcohol. We'll also produce a little bit of acid as a byproduct. This reaction is regioselective when water or alcohols are used as solvents. The new carbon oxygen bond forms preferentially on the more substituted carbon of the double bond. So how does this happen and why? Based on our mechanism, we form this cyclic bromonium ion intermediate. This charge is shared over three atoms. And the charge is going to want to be on the atom where it is the most stable. We have two different carbons here. We have a primary carbon and a secondary carbon. Carbocations are more stable on more substituted sites because of inductive effects. This secondary carbon being more substituted will have more of the positive charge and will attract our electrophile to it. And that is what causes the regioselectivity for this reaction. The alcohol has added to the more substituted carbon of the bromonium ion. This can add from the back as drawn here, but of course the uh, bromonium ion also forms on the opposite face of the alkene. So we will end up with a mixture of enantiomers here. The mechanism explains the regioselectivity of this reaction. The formation of a cyclic bromonium ion intermediate forces the incoming nucleophile, bromide, water, or alcohol, to add from the opposite face, giving an anti-addition. The regioselectivity is explained with water and alcohols based on where the charge is shared on those carbon atoms. More substituted carbons are more stable with positive charge. Thanks for watching.